Hello everyone and welcome to the solution for Amped Gym Challenge 1. So just a reminder on the challenge itself then, you as a video analyst was tasked to do a height analysis and a project report on a couple of images taken of a suspect in an alleged burglary. Okay, first in this video, I'm just gonna go through my workflow. And then I wanna talk about some of the common mistakes that I saw, as well as some of the really good points that I saw from your submission. Okay, so just like any job that requires us to do any analysis towards it, I would first do an analysis of the file itself uh, so this involves taking a look at the metadata, uh, establishing the integrity and the authenticity of that image, and then taking a look at the image itself. Once I've finished doing my initial analysis of this image, I then want to identify the issues with it and then think about the question that I'm asking of that image. So the question I'm asking of this image is a height analysis of this suspect. So when we take a look at this image, then the first thing that screams out to me is that it's distorted from the camera lens. So we need to fix the camera distortion first. And so I applied a undistort filter. After I applied undistort, I used a extract filter, uh, Sobel, which will help me see the lines a little bit clearer. Sometimes I'll use an adjust filter like um, levels just so that I can brighten certain areas to see the lines and what I'll do is as I'm working on my measure 3d sometimes I'll turn this off and sometimes I'll have it on so you can see I'll go to my measure 3d when I was finding the lines for this I would switch between the two and this just helps me find those lines a little bit easier again I'm going to talk about the line selection uh, in more details in a moment but you can see for my x-axis here I used the pavement for my y I used the fence z I used the fence again and then we were given the reference which was this pole with the uh, sphere on top and the measurement I got for my suspect was 180.5 centimeters the individual is actually 179-ish, so pretty close um, to the actual result. So quite an accurate uh, measurement here. I'm quite happy with the result. So I want to talk about the submissions we got. So we got a lot of submissions and they were all very high quality submissions. Uh, some really good work, some really good projects. And I'll go through... Um, the good points in a moment but let's talk about areas where people struggled and with this there was one area in particular and that was the x-axis lines so let's talk about the y and the z first and then we'll come to the x and why that was a struggle so when we look at the y-axis we've got the bottom of the fence and the top of the fence where it dips down now I chose two lines here and I use these two lines and we know for certain that these lines are parallel in real world and that's really important to make sure the lines are parallel in the real world even if on the image they look like they're not we're trying to select two lines that are parallel and I'm really confident that these lines are parallel that they're long enough so in this case, these two lines are sufficient for me. I didn't need to have any more lines there. And then the Z axis, I've done two pairs here of two lines and I went three panels apart. And the only reason why I chose four lines here instead of two is just to mitigate any human error that may have been on the fence by the panels when they were created. Maybe the panels weren't exactly parallel when they were created on one side or the other. So just to mitigate that possible human error, error I did two pairs. Um, one pair might have been sufficient, but I wanted to cover that issue. But again, I'm certain that in real life, these are pretty close to parallel. 
So this is when we come on to the x-axis and where people uh, had some issues with it. Now I chose these pavement lines here because they were the only lines that I could find that were close to our suspect and I knew that they were parallel from the image. Now people got quite adventurous in trying to find lines for the x-axis because it was difficult to find and some of the common mistakes I found were using the pavement and the roof together or using the roof and the windows or the solar panels. And if I keep everything the same except my x-axis, you'll see how it affects my result. So here I've used the uh, roof and the solar panels as my x-axis and it's made a jump of 10 centimeters on my height analysis. And we know this is not right. He's not going to be taller than the fence there. So you can see just from getting these lines incorrect, it's going to throw our measurement off. And the reason why these lines aren't quite suitable is the same points that I used before. So this time they're too far away from our suspect and we're not 100% sure if they're parallel. They could be and they are probably be pretty close to parallel, but it's hard to determine that just from looking at the image. And similarly, where people have used the roof and the pavement, the biggest issue this time is that these lines are definitely not going to be parallel. Um, so this is going to throw our measurement off quite a lot. So these are two common mistakes I saw with the x-axis that I just wanted to highlight. It's always better to take lines that we know are definitely parallel, that may be a little bit shorter, may not... Um, feel intuitively better um, but they tend to be better for the result okay so let's move on to the good points again thank you for all the submissions it was great to see how different people work and and there was some really interesting submissions the first good point i want to highlight is the detailed reporting some of the reports i received were um, amazing and you know, some people even went a step further and they enhanced the tattoo on the suspect's back leg to help with identification, which was really cool to see. Uh, so, yeah, so the, the reporting from everyone was to a really high standard. So that was really good to see. Next thing is that I saw a lot of people using the helper lines in the measure 3D. Again, this can be very useful when doing that measuring. Uh, so that was also really good to see. Uh, and finally, there was a couple of people who, like me, would use the Sobo to help um, them find the lines or using an adjust filter to help as well. So uh, good creative thinking there to just help with the uh, measure 3D tool. So that's it for the first solution video. I hope you enjoyed the first challenge. I purposely set the first challenge to be quite a uh, standard sort of line of work that you would expect but the next few challenges that are coming your way expect them to be a little bit out of the box you may not have encountered jobs like this before but they are based off real jobs and um, so even though you may have not done one before you might do it in the future especially if you're quite new to it so it's going to be a really good learning tool for you uh, to get these jobs done so thanks again and until next time, see you later.